Welcome to We Are the People with Tracy Marks and Jorge Estamba, who ask you to know what's happening with your student loan. Tracy and Jorge keep a deep look at student loans in this country and the industries that surround it. Every week, We Are the People will bring you new insight into the corporate welfare industry, such as bailouts, and they connect with student loans. The show will highlight on your constitutional rights and how the current system is built to infringe upon them. Join the conversation by visiting our website chat room at wearethepeople.tv. Or call the show at 888-565-1470 and let us hear from you. And now, let's tune in to Tracy and Jorge for this week's discussion. Hello and welcome back to We Are the People, Students for Liberty. Um, Jorge Estomba is not with us today, but we will have him back for the first Monday of next month for Move On Monday, and he'll catch you up on all their good stuff and all the bad stuff too and tell you a little bit more about what is important that's coming up for elections and so forth. But today I have with me a, a gentleman, Jeff Van Trees. He is an attorney and he deals with a lot of elder law but he also deals with some issues regarding student loans and he brought it to my attention that there is an option other than bankruptcy for those of you who are fully disabled. So Jeff, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, and um, how you end up getting involved with student loans. Well, thank you, Tracy. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I've uh, worked in a number of field areas of law, including intellectual property and, and elder law, and I've had some people that have had student loan issues that have come up, so I've taken it upon myself to investigate options for people that are struggling with student loan debt. And one of the uh, really heartbreaking situations is if you have someone that suffers from a total and permanent disability that is having issues with student loans and uh, creditors trying to collect. And, uh, you know, there is a, an option available uh, that allows for all of their student loan debt under certain circumstances to be discharged completely without filing bankruptcy. Without filing bankruptcy. That's right. Because bankruptcy is, you know, that it's changing though. I mean, I keep um, getting new information that bankruptcies are going through, but that by no means makes it easy. And for somebody that's disabled trying to go through a bankruptcy with his brutal as they are on you, I imagine that would be even harder. So tell me what this other option is. Well, it's the total and permanent uh, disability discharge, which is an administrative process for all federal loans. That uh, uh, includes direct loans and uh, direct loans and Perkins loans, as well as the family education loans, which don't exist anymore, but those could also be discharged through total and permanent disability uh, discharge process. So the, the way it works is, is if you, th there's certain categories of people that are going to be eligible for this. Uh, somebody that is, has been disabled to an extent that they cannot engage in su substantial gainful activity, either for a period of 60 months prior to their uh, application or afterwards uh, could have their loans discharged completely and they wouldn't have, it wouldn't have the, the same negative effect on their credit reporting that a uh, bankruptcy would have and that's why this is a much more attractive option. Now is um, discharge and forgiveness, is that the same thing or is that just different terminology or are they actually a little bit different? They're a little bit different. Uh, forgiveness, there's a number of different programs that you've, you, I'm sure you've covered before uh, relating to, it, to the service that one might do, uh, for example, if they work for a non-governmental organization or if they're a teacher, certain circumstances they can get some or all of their loan forgiven uh, based on something that they've done. Uh, with discharge, it's really based on the person's inability to work and it is truly discharged it's it's eliminated it's it's not the same thing as forgiveness exactly okay now do you have a tax issue when this happens you do uh, in fact and this is a serious need for legislative reform in my opinion but the discharge debt when that when that debt is discharged all of that 
discharge debt is considered income and it's all taxable. Uh, there really is no way around it with the exception of having yourself declared insolvent, which is a discussion that someone should have with their accountant. But uh, it is taxable income. It's really remarkable when you think about it because uh, Social Security disability is not tax is not taxable. Uh, uh, any type of settlement or verdict from a personal injury case is not taxable, but this is taxable. Uh, just, that doesn't make sense, it, really. It, it doesn't make because sense. Because you're obviously injured. <laughs> you're, you're in the same. Yeah, you're in the same circumstances. You're getting a discharge because you're disabled in the same sense that you're getting Social Security because, because you're, disabled. you're disabled. So if one is not taxed, it's based. You know, they always say that it's uh, that it's the don't kick them while you're down principle principle and uh, they're kicking you when you're down when your student loans are discharged unfortunately but it can be if you're declared insolvent on your tax return then you you can potentially avoid having to pay taxes on that discharge debt so what exactly is insolvent what does that mean it, it means that your uh, your uh, that your earnings and your access to uh, liquidated funds is insufficient to pay your uh, tax liability. It's a unique situation because it is a dis it's it's a discharge debt as opposed to income. So you're not actually getting a check. You know, you're not getting right. money. You're getting uh, a certain amount of money forgiven. Uh, not forgiven. I shouldn't use that term. Having a certain amount of money discharged. discharged. And so because it's being discharged, that is considered income. It's uh, uh, under the tax code. So uh, so make sure and get a hold of your accountant because absolutely. I mean, you should be able to, it sounds like you should be able to get insolvency if you're already in this predicament. I mean, let's face it, most people that are struggling with their student loans, if they're disabled, they're probably having mortgage problems as well as everything else. Very often, yeah. There, there might, you know, it's, it's going to be an issue if you come into a windfall or something like that, then it's definitely going to be an issue if you're the victim of bad timing, so to speak, in that <laughs> regard, where you get a windfall and right at, the, at this time that you're getting your debt discharged. But yes, it's it's generally uh, something that if you legitimately can't pay, that you can avoid having to pay that those taxes. So now you have student loan debt of your own, do you not? I do, yes. So you speak of this with experience. <laughs> I do, I do. Fortunately, I haven't had to uh, claim total and permanent disability, but uh, well, we don't want yes, to do we, that. we don't want that. To, <laughs> we don't we don't want to be in that predicament, uh, and and that's a good problem to have. So, and I, you know, I just wanted to bring this forward because I. I've met a lot of disabled people. Um, uh, for instance, one of the, I actually had um, a gentleman come on and speak about his wife. Um, she went to school where I did. She was already like 95% disabled. They took out her, you know, they gave her lots of student loans. She did graduate, but by the time she graduated, she was more than 100% disabled. She had cancer on top of it. Right. And yet they were still able to, you know, I mean, they were calling her in hospice, wanting their money, literally. And that's exactly the reason that this is such an important issue to me is because a lot of people just don't know that this option is available to them. We've been told for some time that student loans, those are those, it's a type of debt that you can't get rid of no matter what without paying it. And this is one of those options for people that really are in a position of need and that are not, they, they can't physically work. It's not a matter of they can't work because they don't want to. It's they physically can't work. Right. And even, but even, even people like that have lost bankruptcy cases. They have because uh, it's a very much a disfavored. Going back to, w w in order to have student loans discharged through bankruptcy, you have to demonstrate a an undue hardship, which that is generally something that's in the eye of the beholder for purposes of the bankruptcy judge, and they're very unwilling and under most circumstances to find that your uh, situation is such that it's an undue hardship. Uh, so. You know th that's that's why this uh, this availability of the total and permanent disability discharge is is so is so great is that you get to avoid uh, any type of court proceeding at all. It's a purely administrative process. I like that. I like that. That sounds much more doable. Now, do they look 
after you for a certain period of time? Do they check up on you? How does that whole thing work? Well, the way it works is once your application is approved, actually, once you send in your application or even you can call the servicer, it's called, they're called Nelnet. That's the Total and Permanent Disability Servicer. They put a stop to all collection activity at that point. But, but getting back to your question, it's a three-year monitoring period from the date that your application is approved. Uh, during that time period, an individual cannot make more than the uh, poverty limit for a family of two. So that uh, changes each year. Right now it's 15000 and change. It'll be more next year with inflation. And during that three-year period from the date of your, uh, of that your application is approved, you'll have to send in proof of income information each year to show that you're not making too much money. Like your income tax statement type uh, You can send that in. Or, if, or, for example, if you're making no money, which a lot right. of these people are, you, don't, you might not be filing a tax return, in, in which case you'll simply just send them a letter saying, nothing's changed, I made no money, or something to that effect. And notarize it, I would imagine. You don't even have to don't do that. Have to no, you, in fact, it. you can just email it to them. Oh, they, wow. Yeah. How long has this option been available? Because I have not uh, heard of it ever. Well, it's been available for some time. The, the process underwent some major administrative changes in 2013, July of last year. Okay. Uh, the... Uh, the approval, the process, the, the entire process now is done through the, the Nelnet servicer. The way it used to be was your application would be reviewed by the United States Department of Education default resolution group who would review your application and then send it on to Nelnet. And that process could take six months, even, even a year. Oh, I believe that with the Department of Education. And, and so the three-year monitoring, you know, now it really is about three years and, and maybe a little bit more than three years, but it's uh, three years for the monitoring and then you factor in uh, sending in your application. It's really about three years. It, it used to be four years. It used oh. to be an extra, it used to be a fourth, it used to be a year just for them to get all just of your to get all the, paperwork the stuff that and added to it because what you're, they needed to do and, and that three years that clock didn't start running until all of that was done and that took so long six that months at least took I six months imagine. at least yeah. yeah so that's been a, a, a great improvement and the the Nelnet servicer I've been pretty satisfied with their customer service they have representatives available seven days a week and uh, they can easily access your account. You know, you call them, you give them your social security number, and they can tell you pretty much everything you need to know. Yeah. They're so. pretty on the ball, actually. I mean, I've mentioned Nelnet in conversations on Facebook right. and had somebody from their company contact me saying, you know, maybe we can help. Let us know. Right. <laughs> of course, I deal with Sally May, and I'm, you know, very gun-shy about believing any of that. So... If Sally Mae does have your loans and you are disabled, it'll be Nelnet that's taking care of this. It's not going to be Sally Mae. So that's that's a plus in my book. That's correct. And if you have a different servicer uh, while you're in repayment and then you become disabled or you put in this application, then Nelnet will take over and they will service your or rather uh, oversee the monitoring period and they'll become your new servicer. So it's it's only one servicer, that's all you'd have to worry about. Um, and of course it's unfortunate that this is not available for private loans. But It this is, is very unfortunate, but hopefully they'll be doing something with that soon. So we are on WNN 1470. If you'd like to call and ask Jeff a question, our number is 888-565-1470. You can also video chat with us on wearethepeople.tv. So um, right now we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back to talk more about student loans right after these messages. CPA for the People provides CPA services and business consulting for innovative creators. Collaborative, personal, affordable. We specialize in tax consulting, business consulting, financial statement compilation, and personal finance. For more information, please go to www.cpaforthepeople.com or call at area code 630-244-7893. People are talking a lot about inequality these days, about the fact that the richest 1% have so much more than everybody else. But most of the focus seems to be on the United States, and it strikes me that the same story needs to be told about global inequality too. So I did some research, and this is what I found from reliable sources like the UN. 
it turns out that while the U.S. is totally... Out Youthful Savings creates and delivers innovative financial education products through a virtuous approach in order to disrupt the cycle of poverty. We provide affordable college planning solutions through our financial freedom web application and program, youth financial education and entrepreneurship training through our My Own Business Challenge curriculum and program, and group youth programs that teach entrepreneurship and financial education. Ten cents of every dollar earned is reinvested into the community's Saved through the Youth College Scholarships. For more information, please go to www.youthfulsavings.com, email at info at youthfulsavings.com, or call 646-504-7164. You're listening to We Are The People with social justice advocates Tracy Marks and Jorge Estamba. Exposing the faults in our current day society with industries that directly influence student loans. Join the conversation by calling into the studio at 888-565-1470 or join the chat room at wearethepeople.tv. Again, to call in, the number is 888-565-1470 and let us hear your voice. Now, back to our show. And we're back for joining us today Jeff now there's a lot of procedural type things that you should be aware of when you're going to apply for this type of um, help um, do you want to go a little bit into that certainly yes uh, your the application for total and permanent disability uh, you are automatically uh, assumed to be disabled if you're on SSI or SSDI, that is if you're on Social Security Disability uh, and your next review or, or the next time that you're up for review is between five and seven years in the future. So if, if it's less than that, then you have to fill out the form and have it signed by a doctor and everything. But if, you've, if, you're, if your approval period is, is such that it's within five, that it's five to seven years, then you can automatically be considered disabled. Also, if you have been determined disabled by the uh, by the VA, the Administration of Vet uh, Veterans, oh, then you will be automatically, automatically determined disabled. Yes, you just have to you, you 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 check that box on the form, and you don't have to have your doctor sign it and, and fill in all of the information. Do you have to send them anything from the VA? Uh, uh, generally, yeah, you'll have uh, you'll have you should you you'll probably have to send in proof for your paperwork and, and so forth uh, to, to verify that. So that's fairly easy. To that's fairly to easy you to do. You probably have it in your files and if you don't it's easy enough to get. Right and the same thing with with your with SS with your SSI or SSDI uh, and certainly if you're represented by a law firm you can ask you can they'll, they'll have to keep records of that under most circumstances so you can that should be easily obtained or you can always call the VA or mm -hmm. Social Security uh, office uh, and try to obtain it that way if you've lost your paperwork um, and the other thing that's uh, of course important that is that the, f the form itself be totally and completely filled out uh, it's going to ask you things like how does your disability affect your daily activities of daily living and you want to put in all the gory details uh, with respect to that. So this is where you want to say everything. You don't want to try to keep it short and concise. Yeah. You want to give them as much information as you can. Right, and you don't want to be modest or, or anything. I mean, all, all details about how one's disability affects their life. In fact, I've don't helped... Don't be embarrassed. Just, just say it. it. Just do it. Uh, and, and in fact, oftentimes, you know, I've had... Um, in fact, I had one client that that sent me, I asked him to give me all that information, and then he thought of almost as much information as he had originally sent me <laughs> the, the following week about yeah, all of the things. Right. So that, that's, that's definitely important. The other thing uh, uh, is is that it's probably a good idea to to put it in an attachment. That is just to you have a Microsoft Word document and type everything out, and then just write "see attached" on the form. Better than certainly better than having your doctor trying to write it out and right. then having them try to read that. And of course, as always, it's it, the doctor. If your doctor signs it, they have to legibly print their license number. Sometimes. Uh, the applications can be slowed down because they can't, the, read, they can't it. read it. Yeah, so. so yeah, we know how doctors write. <laughs> so, 
Ah, we have a phone call. Hello, who do we have here? Hi, this is Rick. How are you doing? Hey, Rick. How are you? Thanks Not for calling in. Did you have some questions for Jeff? Well, I was interested, you know, in finding out uh, a number of things. One, is there an age limit on permanent disability? Um, does that shift over just to regular Social Security, or you know, does that cause an issue with, uh, um, you know, with being able to discharge? Okay, uh, thanks. Thank you for the question. Uh, no, there's no uh, age limit on this program. Uh, anybody from any age with student loans uh, can apply for discharge. Uh, shouldn't do anything to uh, to uh, change or in any way limit your ability to get Social Security disability. And uh, it's just one of the great things about the program is it's available for pretty much anyone. But it does have to be 100 percent disabled. Is that correct? It has to be. The, the test is substantial gainful activity. Uh, okay. So whether so it could be a little less than 100 percent, depending it, on what you do. Uh, uh, yeah, under some under certain circumstances, yes. Uh, it's either yes, it's either substantial, uh, not being able to engage in substantial gainful activity for a period of 60 months, or uh, expected to result in death. So if it falls within either of those two categories. Well, that is a very important because there have been parents that have been stuck with these loans after they've buried their kids and there's nothing that they can do about it. Right. In fact, Senator Warren actually on C-SPAN brought up a case about that when they were talking with the different banking industries and so forth. Rick, did you have any other question you needed to ask? Those parents have co-signed um, loans in that instance, which is why they're, um, they're still on the tab. Yeah, they did co-sign. Right. It's it's it, it's the the debtor in question. Uh, it, well, let me ask this question, Rick. Was it a was it a private loan or a um, or a, or a uh, federal, federal loan? Federal. I beg your pardon. Federal. Federal. Uh, well, if the um, if 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 the debtor's uh, totally and permanently disabled, then you then it, it, you should be able to have it discharged under most uh, circumstances, or, or you know hypothetically. So, does that answer your but question? Yeah, hundred percent. It can't be anything short of that. Well, it's it's the 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 test is substantial gainful activity. So if you can't be sub gainfully employed, then then you will count. Right, right. But uh, you know, certainly, you know, I, I would I would uh, encourage you to uh, to certainly look at the website disabilitydischarge.org. Uh, that has a lot of information on it regarding the process. Uh, uh, I can repeat that it's disabilitydischarge.org, and. Uh, if you call their, uh, and speak to one of their representatives, uh, any you know specific questions you have regarding the process, they're certainly very helpful. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Well, we've got about four minutes left. Is there anything that you need to add that um, you think that they should know before we have to close our show today? Uh, well, I would just say uh to you know stay on top of your of your loans and, and know what you owe oftentimes uh you know people will will uh, you know come come and seek help from a professional uh when it's when it's either too late or or you know when they're about to go into default so you know as always uh try to keep on top of things even in, even under this circumstance it takes some time for all of the uh, lenders and uh, creditors and so forth and the uh, bill collectors in some circumstances to receive proper notification so the earlier I would always say the earlier the better and communication is key uh, you know try to be in touch with your lenders as much as possible to know what's going on okay now is this something this process is this do you need a lawyer to take care of this process, or is this something someone could do on their own? This is something that uh, if you're going if, that you could do on your own. It, it, if you want to speak to a lawyer for advice, uh, that's certainly that's certainly an option. If it's something that you, you that you'd want to do on your own, uh, it's just important that you 
you know, read the form over very well and uh, and include all information. It's just like anything else with a with a co with a contract, for example. You know, you can read a contract and do it without a lawyer. You can do it with a lawyer. If you're going to do it without, then you just have to uh, be willing to spend more time reading right. it and researching it and so forth. But this is not something that requires counsel, uh, okay. uh, certainly in, in any legal context. So, or you're not legally required to have counsel. So. All right, Jeff. Well, why don't you give out? Your, we have it up, but I'd like you to go ahead and um, give us your phone number and your address, your web address, or and uh, how to get a hold of you in case someone would like to speak with you more on this. Oh yes, my uh, my email address is J as in Jeff, V e as in Victor, T as in Tom. The number two, then law at gmail dot com, and my phone number is five six one seven eight nine six eight six six. My website, which is uh, currently under construction is oltmanpatent.com and that's O-L-T-M-A-N patent.com and I look forward to hearing from anyone. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Jeff, and we look forward to um, hearing more from you in the future. Thank you so much, Tracy. Right. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all, and we'll see you next week. You have been listening to We Are the People with social advocates Tracy Marks and Jorge Estamba who every week bring to the light the needs and changes in our current system. Tune in every Monday night at 7 p.m. on wearethepeople.tv and participate in the conversation in the chat room or call 888-565-1470. Tune in next Monday for more information and facts. And Tracy and Jorge remind you to stay aware of your surroundings and challenges at all times.